Well made adventurers, once again to Let's Play Steinsgate. In the last episode, Rintaru and Ferris were uh, cornered by Four Degrees and his merry gang of um, viral attacker thugs. But just at the 11th hour, Ferris's father came to their rescue with a limousine and now we are in the sanctity and sanctuary of Ferris's apartment. Unfortunately, uh, Ferris has a choice to, um, well, either, well, she does have a very, very serious choice. Either she undoes the, uh, D-mail that, um, prevented her father from perishing in a plane crash, which would mean that uh, Mayuri Shina lives, or she doesn't, and Mayuri Shina dies. I feel dizzy. It's like my brain is rusty. My whole body is heavy with fatigue. The pain from my wounds has subsided, thankfully, but in the end, I couldn't sleep a wink. Well, to be fair, four degrees and his cronies certainly did a number of us. But, uh, that's not why we're worried. We're more worried about Ferris, especially about what she uh, told us the previous night. I promised we'd Ferris that we'd commence the operation at noon. And once we change the world line, everything that's happened here and now will, much like the events with Suzaha, never have existed. Until then, we wait at Ferris's apartment. I've already contacted Daru and the others back at the lab. I told them we'd be performing an experiment today. And Ferris is looking very unhappy about this. Ferris. I can see the traces of tears on her face. The sight of... The sight makes my heart ache. That's the, uh... That's the least we can do. Her usual speaking habits have returned the second she donned the cat ears. What a nifty piece of equipment. Let's let them be for the time being. Maybe I should say wait. Maybe I should say sorry. But I say nothing to Ferris's back as she heads to her father's study. By the time Ferris finishes her farewells with her father and comes out of her study, the phone wave TBA settings are already complete. I contact Dara at the lab and make sure that the 42 inch CRT is turned on. Now all we have to do is send the D-mail. But I hesitate, and with good reason. <sighs> Even now Ferris is uh, unhappy with the turn of events, but unfortunately, uh, as I've said many times, we don't have a choice. Instead of meeting Ferris's eyes, I look down at my feet. Eternal separation from her father. I wonder what Ferris is thinking right now. Considering the fact that she now remembers everything between the, the two world lines, quite a bit. <laughs> And yet it feels like, uh, once we send that email, that fact is going to change significantly. Well, someone's cheerful, surprisingly. I can't say sad when Ferris is trying to cheer me up. I steal myself for what I need to do. Yesterday, just before she left the room, 
Varys told me the contents of the first email she sent. 100 million for your kid. Take the train. That mail stopped her father from getting on board the airplane. As a result, he didn't die, surprisingly enough. But that wasn't the only effect it had on the timeline. Her father needed to sell the IBN 5100 to prepare the 500 million yen ransom. As a result, Ferris never donated the IBN 5100 to Yanabayashi's shrine. With her father alive, Ferris didn't participate in Akihabara's city development conferences, and as a result, otaku-oriented businesses never took root in Akiba. May Queen Yanya never opened. Ferris wasn't as busy, which allowed her to join the Rhinet tournament circuit. In other words, this world lines Ferris has a normal life. On the world line I came from, Varys was not only a student, but also the heir to her father's company, an influential member on the Akihabara Development Board, and a part-time maid waitress. Which life is better for her? Which will give her greater happiness? That's not my decision, it's hers, indeed it is. And her decision is to return to the way things were. I'm just here to wake, help her wake up from this dream. Ferris has already entered the cancellation email. JK on Ransom. I love you, Papa. See you soon. These are Ferris's true last words to her father. Probably, although uh, given the phenomena that's just occurred, you never know. そんなことはあるものか。きっと覚えてるさ。なぜならお前は今過去を変える前と変えた後、両方の記憶を持っているだろう。だからあんなに必死にフェイリスを助けてくれたのかにゃ。Most Take it as you will. I feel my cheeks get warm, so I hang my head to hide my face. I take Ferris's phone. I'm sorry, Ferris. I lied to you. Now we actually have uh, two options here. It's funny because I said we didn't have a choice, but we actually do kind of have a choice, a, ra a Hobson's choice of sorts. Because either we send this email and revert back to the previous world line, which means that uh, Favus's father will have met his end ten years ago. And, but uh, Mayuri's uh, death date will be pushed forward to the 15th instead of the 14th. Which is kind of what happened with Suzuha, as we well know. Or we, uh, we choose not to send this message. And um, we get to stay here with Ferris and her father. And unfortunately that means... Uh, choosing for Mayuri to die in, instead. And we can't do that. We are going to send the D-mail to go back to the world line. I'm so sorry, Ferris. 456914% Chapter 8 Fractal Androgynous world line shifts once again. My head spins, I feel faint. If we had chosen to uh, 
keep Ferris's father alive, uh, Steinsgate would have ended there with um, Ferris's ending. However, that is not the ending that we seek. Slowly the world reasserts itself. I've teleported to the lab te development room. Ferris is standing next to me. Reading Steiner is telling me that the world line has changed. Additionally, the injuries the viral attackers have inflicted on my body have vanished. So is the pain. Which probably means that uh, Mei Queen Yan Yan and otaku culture is back. And uh, as a result, those events never happened. Ferris is standing in the center of the room, looking around. The tears that were in her eyes just a moment ago are gone. I believe we have it uh, in our hand. Just a moment ago, Ferris was fighting to hold back her tears, but that Ferris is no more. And her place is the usual cute, cheerful Ferris with an impish smile on her face. I look at the phone in my hand. It's not my phone. But one with several cute girly cat doll phone straps attached. We have no need of it anymore. So that's uh, one down. I believe three or four more D mails to go. Harris walks up to me with a teasing smile on her face. She pokes at my fingers with her index finger. <laughs> it's not like we can say no, but, um, to be fair, in this world line, what we saw no longer exists. Ferris gently takes her phone from my hand. We don't need to see the rest of the contents. Yep, Ferris is indeed back to her usual self. I don't think we have the energy to be hoeing Kyoma at this point. Before we sent the email, Ferris said that she didn't want to forget. And I lied that she would surely remember. I embrace Feyre suddenly, pulling her t to me as tightly as I can. Feyre remembers nothing. Nothing about her victory at the Rhinet tournament. Nothing about our escape from the viral attackers. Nothing about her father riding up in his limousine to save her. Nothing about how we talked alone in her bedroom. All those events are gone. She remembers nothing. Everything that happened on that world line was undone. What happens to that world line? I don't know. Maybe like Susa has said, it still exists as another possible world line. Or maybe it ceased to exist the moment I sent the email. He'd have to be a god to observe each and every world line, so it'd be pointless to worry about it. But one thing is clear. I can never return to that world line again. Ferris can never see her father again. <laughs> Uh, at least it's Mayuri and not Daru. For uh, forcing you to uh, break your wish. The only thing I can do is apologize. On this world line, Mayuri invited Ferris to come hang out at the lab. Apparently she came to see a costume Mayuri had made. 
Ferris has work after this, so she soon leaves the lab. After seeing Ferris off, I head towards Yanabayashi Shrine. On the way, I stop at Chiodori and take a look around. And lo and behold... Got this data. All the game otaku anime stores are back. The Moe stores exist again. And another message from Kurisu. Hey, what was that now? That was some serious loving hug. I'm seriously jealous. No, not about getting hugged by you, but about having someone of the opposite sex to lovingly hug. Don't misunderstand, what was that anyway? So Kurisu apparently saw uh, Ferris and um, Ferris and uh, well, Kiyomo embracing basically. Don't worry about it. It was something I had to do, and I believe this is probably the fifth. Um, I think this is the fifth um, flag. For the uh, true ending? Maybe, maybe not. I'll have to check my notes at some point, but it probably is. Animate Tor Toranoa Noana, sorry. Mandadrake Gamers Lamtara Melon Books Asubit City. They've all returned to the streets of Akihabara. There's a gigantic anime themed banner hanging from the softmat building. Maids walk the streets, handing out leaflets. Cosplaying girls advertise in storefronts, but the return of this familiar scenery brings no relief to my heart. There is only pain, for everything that I see confirms that Ferris has lost her father, but I can't stop here. I shake my head and head to the shrine. On the way, I notice that the satellite mi is missing from the radio building. Of course it is. Suzuha is gone. The thought brings a new pang of grief to my heart. Before this is over, how much more pain will I shoulder? Too much. Too much. I pass beneath the archway and enter the silent courtyard. I walk up to the main building and jab the intercom. After a few presses, I get a reply. Let us enter. Hi, Dochira san. Oh, Okabe san. And it's uh, Rukiko. Here to greet us. Girly as always, even though he's a guy, even though he's a girl on this world line. Rukiko, Omae no chichiume ni kiite kure. IBN 5100 toyu furui pasokon ga. Well, now that uh, the world line has shifted, that should have happened. I think Rukiko went pale when I mentioned the computer. She lowers her face immediately, so I can't be certain. You go do that, Rukiko. Rukiko hurries inside. It looks like she knows something. Rukiko's dad soon appears. It's good to see that you're still the same. I rush the greeting and get down to business. Something tells me, uh, deep in my intuition, that it's not going to be that easy to get the IBN. Hmm. So the donation did take place. Finally, I've returned to the world line with the IBN. Please, 
That's if he's, that's if he still has it. Ruka's dad heads inside the sanctuary in the back. Don't hold your breath, Kyoma. And uh, Ruka seems uh, fairly distraught for some reason. And uh, probably for a completely other reason. Rukako has been silent this whole time. She keeps touching her hair and looking around nervously. Something is definitely wrong with her. Let's forget that ever happened, Rintaro. I just made things more awkward. I didn't have to say it like that. And as a result, Kurusi put us through three hours of torture. I think Ruka is upset about something else. That was rather sudden. Ruka goes shakes her head in an unnatural way. And yet your reaction seems to indicate otherwise. Bukuko is looking more and more uncomfortable. I'm not liking the look of this. Maybe I'm pushing too hard. I should back off. I did a terrible thing to this girl, obviously. So it might be best if, if I stop treating her as my disciple. I need to treat her like a lady from now on. If I don't, I could get sued for sexual harassment or charged with attempted rape or indecency or something by Kurisu. How exactly do I treat her like a lady anyway? I just treat everyone the same, pretty much. Even in this world line, Rukiko doesn't really like cosplay. And we got a uh, reply from Kurisu. Lies. Damn it, even though all you do to me is sexual harassment. Angry emoji. Um. Yeah, she's upset. Probably on about not being hugged. Why is this girl so lacking in confidence? Why is Ruk well, even in the previous world line, as a male, Rukiko was lacking in confidence. I guess she can't help it if it's in her nature. But didn't she say her reason for becoming a girl was to gain confidence in the first place? And yet she's a girl now, but she still seems the same. Probably because of her uh, sister's nature, me thinks. Ruka's dad returns, that grim expression on his face. I'm not liking this. His timing is good. My conversation with Rukuko wasn't going anywhere. I try asking just in case, but he looks confused. Obviously some ex something unexpected has happened. So for some reason it's not in the shrine. And yet he did receive it. The IPN 5100 isn't here. I press my hands to my temples and stifle a groan. The world line is still twisted. The IBN 5100 is like a mirage floating in front of me. 
I can see it, but never reach it. Well, at least、uh, that hasn't changed. Tomodachis. Rumiho chan wa totemo ripana jose ni narare masta na. Dichi hanjo ga mada shogakse no toki de stayo. Stuji no kuroki san to isho ni kono jinja o tazne te kite kure masta ne. So, Ferris was obviously the one who donated the PC since, um, since, uh, Her father passed away in that plane crash as a result of the plane crash. Well, that's not exactly what I thought. This contradicts Rukugo's statement. Rukugo said she didn't know about the IBN. ルカは何か知らないかな確かここ最近は毎年年末の大掃除の日に宝物殿の掃除をしているだろう And Rukuko is silent on the matter. Once again, Rukuko hangs her head, almost shaking with fear. Her hands are trembling. ルカコ、どうなんだ I try asking again, but she doesn't raise her head. She seems more worried than before. The look on her face betrays her. Rukuko is lying. But why? Remember, she shouldn't even know about the IBN in the first place. Why does she know? Because the world line changed. There's no other answer. Her Dima must be the cause. In Ferris's case, I didn't know what her Dima was about. But in Rukuko's case, I already know what it is. I want to be a girl, basically. The Dima must have had influence beyond Rukuko's sex, the butterfly effect, and somehow changed the location of the IBN 5100. It was like that with Suzuha and Ferris. I can't help but think that the universe itself is keeping the IBN 5100 away from me. At any rate, when Rukuko sent her email, reading Steiner activated, meaning the world line changed. If the IBN 5100 won't return to me on this world line, then my next step is to cancel Rukuko's email. And、thus, I will end the episode there. And when we return, adventurers, we shall actually take steps to、uh, erase Rukuko's D mail and return to the world line in which Rukuko is male, not female. As always, adventurers, until next we meet.